In the last episode of our rebuild, we had a lot of fun. I started off with absolutely nothing and we went to Krosis to get some starting cash. As soon as we had a little bit of money, we went straight to Harakin to get a kiln cape and then to Zuck, which we were able to complete in normal mode with no food. After getting some more GP from Zemrock, but no uniques, we decided to go to hard mode Zuck and see if we were able to try our luck on a 1 in 15 drop chance. At the end of episode 1, I've got a pretty decent setup with a net worth of about 100 million coins, but this is really the difficult part because I've decided that the goal of this series is going to be to get a fractured Staff of Armadol. This is a very expensive weapon and it is by far the strongest magic weapon in the entire game. The PVM progression curve in RuneScape is absolutely grueling because as soon as you've got your base items, every little upgrade will become exponentially more and more expensive. And because of that, we really need to put the pedal to the metal in this episode and it's time to grind. That doesn't mean we're not going to have some fun and I would love to try my luck at Solo Solak as well as some more hard mode Zuck, but really, if we're going to win this thing, we need to do something that is both consistent and has the potential to be an absolute game changer. And to me, that's Zamorak. In the last episode, some of you guys in the comments said there was a little bit too much Sammy, so let's do a bit of a speed run. The Jazz book actually goes ridiculous. That's crazy how hard that goes. So there I omnied early because of my Jazz book. My Jazz book's gonna kill this. Look at that hit splat. <laughs> 21k. <laughs> Oh, I can't find it. I couldn't find my shield though. Man, it's a good thing I've got a 13k death cost. <laughs> my gear is so garbage. Okay, so far, I am liking what I'm seeing with this. That's seven mil. That's seven mil. That's seven mil. That's 10 mil. At this point in the challenge, I've got about 70 million coins, and I think it's time to get myself a staff so that we can start fort ticking. But we've run into a bit of a problem. It seems like I am not the only one who is trying to become a fort ticker because every single staff I tried to buy wouldn't buy for even 10, 15, 20, 25, 30% over Grand Exchange Mid. And I am not trying to get scammed here. So what we've had to do is between looking at an obliteration staff, a superior Zerial staff, a limitless elemental staff, I've actually settled on the only staff that I was able to buy without feeling like I was being completely scammed. It's a weapon I've never used before. And honestly, it's a weapon that I forgot even existed. We're gonna be going forward in this series with a staff of darkness. It's a tier 85 and comparatively it's dirt cheap. So for 25 mil, Stat- I've never used- what does it even look like? I, I've actually never used one of these before. I forgot this existed. Staff of Darkness. And then I can uncharge it and get the heart back, right? I can! Okay, that's awesome. So, I basically sunk 8 mil, and now I have a tier 85 staff. Okay, what does it look like though? Hold. Dude, that's so cool! Did I win? Oh my god! Oh, please! Okay, 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 okay. It took us 18 hours and 38 minutes to get a drop from a boss. If you look at my log at Zami, I have had 33 drops with only two bow pieces. 33? 31? Somewhere around there. I'm not counting them all. A lot of drops with only two bow pieces. If this is a bow piece, we are absolutely gaming. You know what I'm gonna do? Let's check the price of all the drops. Lost Knowledge Codex is 100 mil. That's good. Chaos Roar and Hood would be terrible. Everything else would be really good. I can't, I'm so stressed. In three, in two, in one. Ah, uh, decent. Okay, decent, decent, decent. That is a big chunk of money. Okay, okay, okay. That's a solid drop. That's a solid drop. Uh, 171 mil, okay. Uh, let's sell our comments to you. Let's figure out how much money we have and then let's figure out what the next upgrade should be. That first drop is absolutely massive because all the upgrades we were slowly grinding and working our way towards, we can now immediately just grab. Now, we only got 200 mil, so it's not like we're a billionaire and we could just buy whatever we'd like at this point, but we can get some absolutely massive upgrades. I picked up an Amulet of Souls for 85 mil and I got some Cinder Banes for 84. I also bought myself a second rune pouch because you can never have too many rune pouches. And I left an offer in the Grand Exchange for some Zuriels. Once upgraded, it's tier 88 power gear, so it's almost as good as Tectonic and it's dirt cheap, about 40 mil for the entire set. With our new and improved setup, we should be able to access a lot more content in the game, which is good for the people that are tired of watching me loot Zami over and over and over again. But I want to do a little bit of limit testing and figure out exactly where things are at. 
First place I want to go is Hard Mode Zuck, but I think today's the day we check out Hard Mode Carapax solos as well as Solo Solak, just to see if any of those things would be reasonable and feasible for us to do at this stage. I did it! 100k damage done! That's actually pretty sick! I just used Greater Chain to build, like an idiot. That doesn't kill me, does it? Now we're fine. Worth noting, you don't lose anything by not going flawless. You don't lose drop chance, so... Doesn't really matter. Just kind of a prideful, this thing. Money or cape? Oh, I'm doing this for money. I think Zuck is one of the best money makers that doesn't require much. Well, I guess we'll find out, but that's my, my guess, is that it punches well above its weight in terms of GP, because... An endgame juiced PVMer may not have a ton of fun doing it, but I think I'm, I'm close to being able to do two runs an hour with this setup which would be, uh, that'd be 90 mil an hour. And 90 mil an hour sounds pretty okay to me. The reason I like Zuck is if I get a full book or a Magma Tempest, I can instantly buy an EOF or a sword piece. Like the, the GP amount is like perfect for that. And I phase the boss. No! I'm so sad. <laughs> okay, every aspect of the plan was perfect except for the and I phase the boss part. Hundred K. Okay, perfect. So that's gonna be a two cycle for sure. Good. So the trick for Harakin, you have to kill these warding tentacles, because these are the ones that give him uh, damage reduction. So there are warding ones and piercing ones. The warding ones make him take less damage. The piercing ones pierce through your armor. So I think I killed this a little too fast, because now my sunshine's on cooldown. So this might not be like a perfect suck, but we'll see. Why did I use sunshine? I was trying to tsunami. No, I've actually just, the whole, this whole thing was me going for kill times. How much time do I have left? Five seconds? All right, make the most of it. Shatter for Jaspook? Jaspook should do a lot here. 17k Jaspook, not bad. I hate it here. Like, this is totally my, my own fault. I did this to myself. 34 minutes and like 15 seconds for a hard mode Zuck run in the setup. That's just about two an hour. Do we get a drop in three, in two, in one? Nope. Uh, we got another Chaos Diary roll. So that means we should go do 500% Dami again with a reroll. I think we should go back to Zuck. I think that was great. I'm hitting like a bus. <laughs> that is 500 in Rage Zamorak with no food used. 8 mil? Yeah, that's not so good. But you know what is so good? <laughs> so far, we've lost 4 million coins by rerolling our loot. All right, I'm going back to Herbo deck. Wait, Shatter into Jaspook. This is going to be a huge Jaspook proc. Ready? 18k. Just a quick note here. When I'm talking about how I know it's going to be a really big Jaspook proc, basically what I'm doing is I am intentionally using high damaging abilities whenever I see the Jaspook icon on my buff bar. Whenever the icon is visible, what it's doing is it's storing 20% of the damage I'm dealing. So what you can do to get even more damage out of the Jaspook is just pay attention. And when you see that proc, you want to use things like Shatter and your strong thresholds because they're all effectively going to be boosted by 20%. Alrighty, Mr. Hardboard Zuck, maybe we'll get a drop here. This is the third hard mode Zuck we've done. And we also did one normal mode as well. So fourth Zuck total, Omni for drops. Unlucky. What's my all-time favorite boss in terms of fun? Uh, Telos. Telos or hard mode Virago. But it's also like for the period of time they came out in. You know what I mean? Like with current power creep, neither of those two bosses interest me the same way. The mechanical skill and tactical knowledge required to run around in a box this is the only part of RuneScape that I actually really enjoy. Like, I wish more of RuneScape was like this. We might get out of this under 31 minutes. An absolutely juiced hard mode Zuck run. Let's Omni for drops in three, in two, in one. What do you got, Free Blast? Unlucky. 19 mil in the Zuck chest. No rerolls. Let's go back for another. So, for the triple Jad, oh God, I don't know how to angle my camera. Uh, whatever, man. I'll, I'll be fine. I'll probably be fine. Back to range. Back to mage. Back to range. Back to range. We're good. We're good. We're good. Back to range. 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 Don't use asphyxiate. Magic. Magic. 
ranged. Is that one not dead? Wait, really? Oh, there you go. Got it. Magic. Did we win? Unlucky. Pleasantly surprised to see 25 million coins in the Zuck chest, but I am pretty Zucked out, so I think it's time to try out hard mode care pack for a break. I don't have the highest hopes about it, but it should be interesting either way. I do wonder what kind of kill time we're going to be able to get. Hard mode. All right. <laughs> One of the only real gripes I have with Hard Mode Karabak is phases 1 through 3. They have a ton of life points and the mechanics are extremely easy. So what ends up happening if you're planning on camping this boss for a long time is you end up just getting stuck in this super long, boring, repetitive phases 1 through 3 where virtually nothing changes. It's not particularly difficult, you don't really take a lot of damage, but you do have to deal just a stupid amount. And especially with my gear limitations, I think I'm doing a great job of dealing damage and getting through the phase relatively quickly, but still, there is a limited amount of hard mode care pack kills I'm going to be able to do before I just completely lose my mind. 1 through 3 is not one of my favorite things, and honestly, if I could instead swap out phases 1 through 3 with just phase 4 over and over and over again, I think I probably would. I just find it a lot more fun. A little bug abuse. Good for the heart. Wait, we're actually doing great so far. Wait, I'm taking no damage. This is going really, really well. <laughs> Wait, this is blowing my mind right now. Dude, for the people that are like animate dead is fair and balanced. Bro, in what way I'm AFKing? This is blowing my mind right now. <laughs> that is a no food. Hard mode care pack solo with a kill time of 629. Cannon Hermit Gary is absolutely yoked. I can't believe how well that went. I think what I do is I think I'm overestimating a lot of these bosses with like the power creep index on just like base greater concentrated blast. Also, if you guys are wondering what the VIP pod is for, uh, there's a trick on phase four. It's a perfect example of something that isn't really like listed anywhere, but does work. Um, if you click on a clone and then VitPod and then click out of it, it will give the clone 20,000 life points, which will allow the clone to tank really well. I call it building a chonker because you're taking a wimpy regular clone and you're turning it into a chonker. But however you want to call it, you do that. Okay, used a little food this time, but that was almost a sub six. So uh, yeah, shaved off a bunch of time. That's a sub six. <laughs> 552. Not bad at all. All right, good stuff. Wait, can I juice this? Wait, hold. Gamer. Ha! That should have killed me. <laughs> the surge back was bad. The surge in was good though. Yeah, money. Let's see, bro. Ooh. Manuscript we can reinvest. Trisk piece and a line going all the way up to the next planet where Zoros is AFKing. So we're out of solo hardware care back. Seemed to go, I would say, I would say decently well. Not perfect, but not bad. Uh, the next boss we're going to try, I could see going very poorly. Uh, we're going to try to solo Solac. Yeah, I do not have, I don't have high hopes at all for this, but let's go. You know what I should have done? I should have bought a Merciless Kite Shield with all my money. That was actually kind of dumb in hindsight. Like, I had enough money for a Merc, and I really should have bought one, but... Please? Are you kidding me? I missed it by, like, 1 HP. <laughs> so, do Roots spawn here? Do I get Root Links here or not? That's the question. I don't know if I do. Oh, I don't work it. Yeah, so the issue here is I'm now missing 300,000 damage currently. Dude, solo Solak is hard. Compared to like hard mode Karapak or like anything else, I'm like really surprised at how difficult this is comparatively. Because I'm struggling this much to deal damage, I know that completing the last phase in a solo Solak kill where I have to do 200,000 damage in a very short period of time is absolutely not in the cards. Even if I basically max roll everything, there's no way I've got enough damage for that. So it's time to employ a little bit of cheese. On phase three of the Solak fight, Solak reaches an HP cap at 200,000. So you can't lower Solak beyond that. But that HP cap isn't really a hard cap. Basically what the game does is it runs a check that says if Solak is below 200,000 life points, reduce all incoming damage by 100 times. And you can actually use this to your advantage because if Solak is above 200,000 life points, there's gonna be no damage reduction at all. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna throw 10 Storm Shards, we're gonna Sunshine, and then right before 200,000 life points, I'm gonna use 
shatter. What that should allow me to do is give me a free 30,000 damage out of the phase four HP on phase three. It's a little bit of a cheese strategy, but I see it as my only option and it's extremely viable, especially if you're trying to solo Solak without the best damage output. After that point, I'm gonna then go AFK in phase three and restack my shards, and we're gonna head into phase four with a base 170,000 life points and all my shards back. It should make it a lot safer. Alrighty, that is a solo Solak kill, please. Whew, that was close. Okay, that was very not worth our time. That took way too long to be worth, but it was cool that we did it. All right, in three, in two, in one. Can you imagine? That Grimpeed is worth like eight and a half build out. Seven, oh, they're going down, unlucky. People have discovered the secret of Solak. Okay, it's time for the cereals because that Solak experience taught me one thing more than anything else, which is that being able to deal damage is important and we are not quite there yet. All right, fit check. That uh, looks so bad. It looks so bad. Wait, does this mean we have to go for Impatient 4 again? I don't want to do it again. I like, okay, in terms of like YouTube videos to just chill out and watch. Um, no, you did not just restore my invention level. You, I got to sit here even longer. Accept aid. Friends and clan, friends and clan, friends and clan, friends and clan, friends and clan. I can't believe you did that. You had a perfect record. 999 messages with zero infractions. I just can't believe this is an actual part of the game. Like this is actually the way that you're supposed to do this. Oh, we got it. That actually wasn't nearly as bad as last time. All right, done. Look at, look at how stupid this gear looks. <laughs> look at it. It's not about what the gear looks like. It's about what the gear lets me do. And right now I'm hitting like a bus. This kill time isn't good, but it's because of the mistakes I made. The next one should be like a 530. Nice, cool. This is a juiced kill. Come on. That was almost a sub five. Zuriel Zach is zooming. Um, of course they got an effigy. Surely that's not rare or anything. No, surely not. We've reached the point of the video where I think it's time that I reveal my plan for how we're gonna conduct the remainder of this rebuild. The rebuild ends once I've got a fractured staff of Arbital, which at the time we're recording is worth over a max cash stack. So we're looking at a lot of money that needs to be made, and we're not gonna make that kind of money without some strategy. Here's what I think makes the most sense. We're gonna focus on not one, but two money-making methods. The first one is hard mode Zuck. If I can get any of the uniques from hard mode Zuck, which are not super rare, that'll get me enough money for an essence of finality. Upon getting an Essence of Finality, I should be able to do Zamorak even more efficiently than before, and that should really unlock a lot of loot potential. The thing that makes Zami a really intriguing option for me is not only that the commons are extremely good, which means that if we go dry and we cannot get uniques, we're still gonna end up making a lot of money. But more than that, the loot system itself is extremely favorable for a rebuild like this, because there's something called bad luck mitigation. This is an oversimplification, but how bad luck mitigation works at Zami is any kill you complete above 100% in rage, and your unique drop chance will get more and more common. What this means is it is virtually impossible to go dry at Zamorak. Every time you kill the boss, you're actually linearly progressing and getting closer and closer to rolling a unique. To put into place my master plan, I need two things. The first thing I need is an Essence of Finality, and the second thing I need is an Inquisitor's Staff. Once I've got those two things, I will be able to do 2,449% enraged Telos claims, and as soon as we can get to Telos, we can finish this thing no problem at all. Telos is by far the best way to finish this off, because it's a boss I've already learned how to do, I know for a fact that I can do it with the gear that I'll have at that point, and unlike many of the more recent bosses that have come out in this game, a unique drop at Telos is a 1 in 15 at that enrage, which means you're not really playing this game of grind the boss for as long as humanly possible and hope you get lucky. It's so consistent that I should be getting a drop every couple hours, regardless of how lucky or unlucky I am. So, with the plan in place, it's time to execute.
Shield arm. Wait, really? That... I don't think that should assign me. I disagree. Uh, I don't have res. Okay, hold. I did not realize that I skipped every single spec. So we have to Cade. This doesn't kill me, does it? No way. Oh, we're fine. <laughs> okay. It does not. I don't know how this enrage works. <laughs> Eighty six K, that's actually sick. That's somewhat close to one cycle, actually. That's good. It says hard mode Zuck kill number five or six. Let's see what we got in store for us. Omni for drops. Did I win? Oh my god! No way! There's no way! It is three o'clock in the morning. So we're gonna we're gonna keep it to that. But that is such a sick drop. It's actually like this might be enough money that I get an EOF. Holy moly, Zuck actually paid off. Also, holy crap, Darden still plays? What does it sell for though? Is it actually like 400 mil? No way. 305 mil, beautiful. Okay, we need to liquidate the funds. We need to consolidate and liquidate. Could do that right now. I buy a Reaper necklace for 85 mil. I'm getting merged to Narnia. Let's try 183. There we go, I am being merged. <laughs> but that is an alchemical hydrix. Okay, I need to repair that to a hundred we make an alchemical hydrix necklace i believe and that should get us an eof you're about to fuse the following alchemical hydrix amulet of souls reaper necklace you will receive essence of finality amulet done eof unlocked okay ready watch this great hp oh my god this is the best I'm actually like, I am, I know I'm grinning ear to ear right now. Are you kidding me? We're, we're, we're not going to see specs at this boss anymore. This is the best upgrade. I'll put in an offer for 64. Oh, but, and then we can equipment dissolve the crystal ward because I mean, it's a crystal ward. That's an arcane spirit shield, but okay. And now we've got a setup. Now we've got a freaking setup. Compare this to what we had two days ago when I had the 12 different runes in my invent. We are now 28 hours in. Uh, I've been averaging like nine hours a day. Can I check my Zami chest? We haven't actually looked at it in a while. 12 mil is, uh, yeah, not bad. Let's just put on the power gear and see if we have the damage for this. I think I probably will. Oh, we've got this easily. Okay. So that is under 14 minutes, which means I think we can do 500% claims. And also I forgot I had a Calgarian demon until P7. So I literally did not use it a single time until then. So I feel like 500 is viable now. Definitely vote beast. I think it will be. I feel good about it actually. I don't know why I feel good about it because this boss has screwed me over many times, but. Okay, and then I go like this. And as they say, when in doubt, You're kidding me. I think I can do it with the Omni. I think we're okay. We're fine. Go! How? It was a masterpiece. <laughs> Everything you'd want out of a Zami kill. The plan for today is pretty simple. We have max bad luck mitigation at Zami. So the objective is gonna be to get a drop and just hope it's a good drop. Alrighty, first 500 kill of the day. I would say pretty smooth, not too bad. What have you got in store for us? Mr. Zami, those are not the green sparkles. Unlucky. No way. That was a really good kill though. Like until the death part at the end. That was a really, really like, that was like two and a half minutes faster than our previous best. So that's good at least. Yeah, you know what's funny actually? If I had spent these 36 hours just doing Krosis like we did on hour one, I would actually have made more money, but I would have had way less fun though. Getting a Zuck drop was awesome and getting a Zami drop was also awesome. 
I am also gonna literally cry if I get like a Vestments of Havoc hood. I'll also say, Zami with max bad luck mitigation is, is not so bad because our drop chance is so much better than any other boss. Like, I was looking at it too, because the other drop that would get us enough money to go to Telos would be like anything from a hard mode care pack, right? But the drop rates are so bad at hard mode care pack. Even if my kills are five minutes and 20 seconds, which is what they're approximately with this setup, it's like a complete waste. What the f Did you guys- I was at the witch! When a range hit just out of nowhere! Man, Igneous Omni is so juiced. Does like 30k damage in a sunshine. It's pretty crazy that it's just like, magic was already the strongest style. And then they were like, what if we add strong abilities for each style, but we'll make the magic one the strongest one. This is your official notice to get a Zuck Cape if you've been putting it off. It's gross. Okay, cool. Back in the win column. Good stuff. Could we please turn green? Next kill. Yeah, 38 hours in. I will say something that I, I've kind of been caught off guard by is I'm doing the bosses that have the best chance for uniques. And in 38 hours of gameplay, I've had two uniques, two singular broadcasts. That seems really, really low to me, but I don't think it's that I'm unlucky. I just think that's the way that RuneScape has trended. I think long gone are the days where you can like choose a boss and you'll probably get something. What's a good edict order for someone new to Zami? Great question. So generally speaking, if you're going above 100% in rage, you just, you want to start with two and four. Those are the two most important ones to lead with. Two, four, six, one, three, five would be like the slow, safe, good, consistent edict order. Yeah. Oh my God, we're green. Okay, this is, I'm really stressed out. We need like 200 mil from this, at least. We need at least 200 mil. If it's, if it's more than 200 mil, we're great. Um, if it's less than 200 mil, we gotta go back to the drawing board. 38 hours in, five days in. Oh, please be a bow. Like, this would just be a perfect opportunity for a bow piece. Look at my log. Look at this. Look at... This would be the perfect, ideal, optimal moment to get a bow piece. In three, in two, in one! Bro, I can open up a bookstore! This is the worst. This is actually the worst. Stop calling me Bookstore Barry! This is the beauty of Zami though, like look at this. I might have made more in commons grinding for that drop um, than the value of the drop even. It's, it's honestly, it's quite possible, which is really, really solid. This is something I've never said before in my life and it does not apply to me in any way, but I think we're a little short. I think what I'm gonna do to de to decompress from Zami, I think I wanna do a hard mode Zuck run and then during the hard mode Zuck run, we can, we can figure out the plan. Wait, I'm actually juicing right now. Wait, go, 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 go. <laughs> That's insane! We almost just one cycled hard mode Zuck Harakin in this gear. So we did uh, we did 270,000 damage. That actually, that bodes well for Telos, honestly. Imagine. Okay, yeah, that's okay. I will take it and I will happily take an Igneous Stone, six mil and no reroll. I'm 22 minutes in. I think I can get this. I really want a sub 30. I am willing to engage in taking some risks here for it. Okay, this is such a PR. We are not gonna beat this for the rest of the series. That is a sub 29 minute hard mode, Zuck. <laughs> not bad at all. Comfortably doing two an hour. I feel great about that. Unfortunately, no drops. That's really, really solid. What isn't solid, those are loot. We did not so well, but it's about six mil per run. It's not, uh, not the best, but we'll take it. To be able to do high enrage Telos claims, I need two things, an Inquisitor's Staff and a Stadius Warhammer. And I also need some money for supplies, Vuln Bombs, Death Costs, all the rest. All in all, it's probably going to be about 500 mil, which means with everything in my bank being sold, I'm probably 150 mil short. I know that the best way to get that money is Zamorak. If I get a unique, awesome, that just finishes it off, and if I don't, I'll get there in commons. But I've just spent the last three days at Zami, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try my luck anywhere else that might be able to get me a draw. We started off by doing an hour of hard mode care pack, and although my kill times were getting faster and faster, my drop luck was the same as always. 
After Karapak, I still wasn't feeling mentally ready to go back to Zamorak, so I decided to go to Raksha. Something you figured out at Raksha that was really cool is I'm actually doing over 300,000 damage per minute with this setup, which is a lot higher than I thought we'd be able to get to. I don't have any fancy perks and I don't have the most expensive gear, but these skill arms felt really passable. Unfortunately though, my time was not exactly well spent because I came out of my Raksha hour with nothing to show for it. Okay, I'll be real with you guys. I am so tired of Zamorak. I'm tired of looking at Zamorak. I'm tired of doing Zamorak. I'm tired of editing Zamorak. I just want to get to Telos so badly. So we're going to use the power of movie magic, if that's cool with all of you. And I'm just going to skip the next four hours of Zamorak. I promise it's no different from the last 12 hours of Zamorak we just finished watching. The Grand Exchange has been my worst enemy throughout this challenge. It really has. Okay, uh, 357 mil. We've got an ink staff. Now, I have 69 mil left, and I need a hammer. Hammer is about 120. Okay, we're really, really close. So basically, what I'm gathering here is we're going to be able to do Telos tonight. But we do need to do, like, another probably hour of Xander. This was the goal. This has been the goal for so long. Since day two, the idea was to get the Telos. Um, precise six genocidal... Equilibrium 4. Not having Aftershock kind of sucks, but we'll be fine. We'll make it work. In Dude, I look so juiced in this setup. This is going to be fun. Wait, it's so on cooldown! No, damage, 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 damage! I'm dumb, dude. <gasps> We're green! Oh my god! Okay, hold. Hold. Hold! Please. Please. This is the point that our luck finally turns around and I become a trillionaire. In three, in two, in one! I did nine hours of Zamorak for that. Nine hours. I could have done like one ED1 run. 31 big ones. Delicious. You could have high out rune bodies that it would have made you more money, probably. Hammer's only 98 mil. Okay, that's big. I would normally consider buying a dart a colossal waste of money, but it's fun, and I just have a feeling that I could end up needing it. So, 5 million coins that I kind of don't really have down the drain. Let's get a dart. Now, I need a merc. Please buy. 45 mil. Wait, we've got a merc. Okay, we're good. We're actually good. Now, one issue that we're going to run into here is... I have not done Telos with, without a Fasoa and just straight up cheese in an extremely long time. Like I'm talking three plus years. I can't remember any of the rotations and I'm kind of hoping they just kind of come back to me. If it doesn't, we're pretty doomed. But uh, yeah, it's Telos time. After five and a half grueling days of straight grinding and mostly nothing but Zamorak after Zamorak after Zamorak kill, it's finally time for Telos. I haven't done Telos without a Fractured Staff Armital and all of the other power creep in a very long time. But assuming the rotations come back to me, we're going to be in for an absolute treat. If I can manage to get 2,449% enraged Telos kills with this setup, we are going to be rolling in money in no time at all. Here are the approximate prices of each Telos unique. With current prices, a full Saren Godbow, which is a dormant Saren Godbow plus three orbs, is only 200 million coins cheaper than a Fractured Staff of Armital. So, without further ado, welcome to the endgame. Wasn't good, but P1's dead. And I have to g staff on P2, I remember that. P2's done? I don't know the uppercut timing because I don't know how to do this boss anymore. Live. Okay, P3 done. <laughs> done. It's all coming back. Oh, I can't remember how to do P5. Uh, sh how do I do P5? Come on, come on, go, go, first try. I mean, I was really scuffed, but first try, come on. Whoo, okay, this, this could work. I'm so stressed out right now, but let's go. I just nuked the whole phase in like two seconds. Come on, Gary. 
Oh Gott. This is a dart angle. <laughs> Throw it! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> okay, I need a clear-headed switch. I forgot about clear-headed. <laughs> oh my god! Yes, let's go! <laughs> Come on! Nobody does it like this! Claim that! Wait, that's a 1 in 45! That's rarer than a Zammy drop! Are you kidding me? Oh, that should have been winnable. Okay, I need to change some keybinds up because not having keybound stuns makes it really hard for me to stun, as you can imagine. Unbind sun and tsunami. Okay, so this time while I'm running around, I can actually stun there. And the idea is because I've stunned it, we can kill it. Beautiful, okay, good stuff. Whew. Every single golem splashed. <laughs> And I have genuinely no idea how. Oh god. Um. That's not fair! Oh my god, I'm faced. Holy crap. And he parks another one. Holy. That was absurd. We've made it to Telos, and I thought that it was going to be easy from this point forward, but I was so incredibly wrong. I think for me, this was a confirmation that the amount of power creep we've had has turned my rotations extremely lazy, and my general Telos technique and kill quality, if you want to call it that, has absolutely fallen off a cliff in the last three years. And I took an absolute beating. I died, and then I died again, and then I died again, and then I looked at my coin pouch and realized I'm almost out of GP, and I have no loot in the bank either. So the pressure is on to get some kills here, and if I can't figure this out soon, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Okay. Here's something that I enacted when I initially pushed a 4K in 2020. The deal was, if you get tilted, you just try again tomorrow. Okay, cool. Backbeam Reds conquered, kind of. Actually, that was a sub-5. Okay, that's easily the best kill of the night. I think I'm gonna end on that note, because holy moly. Okay, first kill, absolutely perfect. Okay, good, 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 good. Um, that's a drop, yes! Okay, be beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I'm not awake yet. That is a red orb on the first kill. We freaking take those. Let's go. We claim those. <laughs> Whew, good start, good start, good start. Ha! We're actually disgusting. I went to bed a failure and I woke up a Telos prodigy. Great kills. Terrible drops, 5.7k, but great kills. Oh, why am I bringing melee? <laughs> okay, that's a skill issue. Can't be mad about that one, team. Amazing. All right, good, we're learning. Okay, also learning how cheap dwarf weed seeds are, apparently. <laughs> They're coming around, but it's fine. Beautiful, okay, cool. I'm happy with that. I am not happy anymore. <laughs> I can do this. I can do this. Whoo, okay, good. Yes, let's go! Okay, that's an orb set done. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Now, the question is, what's the cheapest dormant to make a weapon? Because I might not have enough money to make a weapon. I might need to go back and get a dormant. I don't have 18 mil, but I do have enough money to keep going. So let's just keep going. All right, imagine it's dormant time. Nope. 700k though, that's awesome. Okay, we, we kind of need those 700k commons. I'm spending like 200k a kill in just like runes and vuln bombs and stuff. And I'm low on divine charges too, so I got to buy more. Okay, we're good. <sighs> Why do we get the worst drop at every freaking boss in the game? We literally did nine hours of Zami for a Havoc hood, which is 40 mil to Get a Telos set up to do Telos with 400k to my name for King Reprisal. 40 mil on the dot. 
Uh, it's better than no drop, but we we have really gotten shafted here. Like, what a steer! Ha! To be fair, he is level twenty six thousand. That's reasonable that they could hit that hard. Did I win? Ooh, fourth orb. Okay. <laughs> I really did all that for four dwarf weed seeds. Pretty cool. I think if you like look at what Luca does, right? The truth is, you don't have to do the things Luca does, right? I think a lot of RuneScape 3's innovation has happened because we haven't had difficult PVM content in a long time. So what is there to do once you're at the end game? It's just optimize. So current optimized strats little losses are very intimidating, but absolutely unnecessary. I mean, as you can see right now, right? I'm using a pretty inexpensive setup and I'm doing pretty good 2449% in Rage Tello skills. Every kill's five minutes long. I'm doing basically the bare minimum, right? Like I don't have a Fasoa. I'm not doing any EOF swapping. I don't have an ABS. I'm not using a Grimoire. I don't have like a Calg that I have to juice. I'm not even using Smoke Cloud because it seemed like too much effort, you know? Most of the like juicer strats, they don't exist because they're needed to kill the boss. They exist because endgame PVMers are really, really bored. <laughs> and I think because of that too, a lot of people get intimidated by high tier PVM or think that you need a lot more for it than you do. So I'm hoping in this series, I can kind of showcase that you really don't. The other thing too, that does happen because this is not a blameless situation. Sometimes someone will make a, a series. Like I, I think Rio made a series that was like doing high tier PVM with low tier gear and stuff. And every comment was people being like, it doesn't count because you know how to do it. And then Rio's like, yeah, that's the whole point. But the truth is, as someone that's making music content for 10 years, there are some people that are just allergic to learning. They don't actually want to learn. They don't want to put in any effort. They just want to make excuses. Don't make videos for them. They're completely hopeless. There's, it's a waste of time to make videos for that person. Just let them whine on Reddit. Just let them complain. Did I win? I won! Let's go, dude, I'm rich. I'm actually rich, I'm retiring. Put that in the Roth IRA and in 50 years time, I am gonna be a trillionaire. Did I win? All right, in three, in two, in one. Dude, oh, this is gonna be bad. Oh no, oh boy. Mm. Skill issue. We go again. That's okay. I haven't died that many times. I'm not going to be mad about it. I'm just going to... I'm not even going to go look and see what happened. I don't know what happened. Oh, we're absolutely juiced. Red beam plus sun is gross. All right. I'm feeling to drop this kill. I just... I feel good about it. I shouldn't have felt good about it. But it's okay because I feel good about next kill. What? Where did that rock come from? I didn't see that at all. That was crazy. Go team. Oh my God. You're kidding me. Again? Bro, I have five orbs in the bank that I can't turn in anything because I'm too broke to buy a dormant. Oh, brutal. Telos, why? How could you? And even though these golems can hit 6Ks, I've said this before, but the, the pure golems are bugged on phase four, so their damage output doesn't scale at all past 0% in rage. So even though he's level uh, 26,490, his max hit is like a 200. <laughs> so yeah, if you're ever like trying to figure out how to lure the minions and you can let a pure golem go, that's not a bad thing. It doesn't really matter. That's only for phase four though. Phase five, they hit like a bus. All right, good first kill today. Not bad. Did I win? Oh, I did win! Let's go, dude. <laughs> Big start to the day. We take those. Pog. Dude, can I just say, having two orb sets in the bank with 32 million coins in my name feels really good. I could have a Fasoa today. Yeah, I've been pretty unfortuitous because we've had eight drops with zero dormant so far. And you should get a dormant every two and a half drops. <laughs> so... <laughs> Yeah, we're, uh, we've been a little unlucky, but that's actually a complete lie. That's not how the Telos drops work. So how it actually works is there are 115 separate unique rules. So once you hit the drop rate to get a unique, 
what it's going to do is it's going to roll an 115 sided dice. If it hits between a 1 and a 75, that'll give you an orb. And then there's a 10 out of 115 chance of each of the other four uniques, the reprisal codex and then the three dormants. What this means is if you roll a unique, there's a 30 out of 115 chance of receiving a dormant or just under a 1 in 4. But also, name a more iconic duo than me going inexplicably dry on something that isn't even rare. Good kill. Did it win? What? Man, they really given me two reprisals and a stick of sadness. <laughs> Although after the Fasoa nerf announcement, I mean, to be fair, this is, uh, you know what we call this? We call this a viable weapon is what we call this. <laughs> Oh! C'est quoi ça? Le stomp? I haven't experienced le stomp in a very long time. Uh, Larbear, thank you so much for the primer. I appreciate it. We're primed and ready to get a drop from Telos. No, no, we're primed to get mauled to death. By... Volcanic golems. Ha! We're fine. I don't know why I cut that so close, but we're all good. Wait, I didn't do a lot of damage, though. Oh, no. Chat, my damage is lacking. Look at the sh movement. Y'all see that entangle? It was beautiful. Put me in the Telos tourney. Coach, I'm ready. No, oh, I got homework. <laughs> no! <laughs> All right, we now have seven orbs, two reprisals, and one stick of sadness. Amazing. This is my best back beam ever. Just disgusting. That was nuts. You know, also be nuts. A soccer ball. Delicious. Oh my god! That was an absolutely insane play. Whew, everything's fine. Good kill. Great work. And a great... done oh my god 66 hours 14 minutes in i think that's a persona done oh my goodness wait i'm actually rich i'm actually so look at this look at all the soccer balls soccer balls where's the look at that dude we basically did the whole dormant title minus uh minus one drop <laughs> The next 20 minutes were spent in World 2. There is no worse way to celebrate a big drop than having to deal with World 2. After 30 minutes of people attempting to scam me and scalping prices and doing the thing where I say, hey, I'm selling this item at this price, and then they trade you and then they put in another price that is not the price that... Bro, you traded me. What are you doing? I will sit here all day. I ain't got nothing to do. Actually, I'm at work right now. I was genuinely ready to quit the game, and I was so fed up, I was almost about to pay 100 mil extra for a Fractured Staff armor roll than I should have just to not have to deal with this place. It's genuinely the most miserable experience in all of RuneScape. Fortunately for me, my friend Cash had an extra Fractured Staff armor roll, and he was in the market for a Saren God Bow, so I made the trade to him instead. I had offers from Rutgers at 50 mil more, and I had the money, but it was a matter of principle. This place is miserable, and I cannot wait for the Grand Exchange update. It honestly almost counteracted how excited I was after getting that drop. The World 2 genuinely grinds my gears like nothing else. Fair offer, chat, we're good. This is good, price is good, chat, weigh in, fair offer. I would say so, it's legit, it's good. It's good, yes, fair. Okay, 
Oh, thank you, Cash. I'm just glad I'm out of here. With our fractured staff of armadal completed, that marks the end of the rebuild. In the end, I couldn't get it done in under a week, and it ended up taking nine days and just over 68 hours. But in the end, we got where we needed to get to. I think it would be really easy to get in under seven days if I'd had a little bit of better luck at Zebrock, but in the end, bad luck always comes around. Oh, and I still have the rest of my stream to do, so I figured, eh, may as well go back to Telos. Never know what could happen, and I don't really feel like doing something else just for a couple hours. And this happened. Do you guys know what time it is? Cause I have a sneaking suspicion it's orb time. No way! No way! There's no way! What? Duh! Huh? Wait, I'm rich! I am actually rich! What in the world? I think the moral of the story is if you stick with it and you're willing to grind, you can make an absolute ton of money in this game. That being said, I'd be lying if I said this process wasn't absolutely exhausting. I probably played a little more than I would have wanted to, and everything after day one felt extremely long. Challenges like this one really make me wonder about the possibility of, of more limited time game modes in RuneScape 3. I think being able to start off with an account that has a lot of unlocks and seeing how quickly you can progress is an absolute ton of fun, and hopefully that's something that we get a chance to explore soon. That being said, if you enjoyed this video or the miniseries, I'd really appreciate a like, a sub, a comment, any of that stuff, if you want to do that. I've been seeing a lot of comments on Reddit and in-game about how, oh, there aren't any RuneScape content creators, no one's making RuneScape content anymore, all the RuneScape content sucks, and I just want to say that I hope this video is the kind of thing that people are looking to see. Because at the end of the day, that's the only reason I do it.